So, hello everybody. Uh, thank you for listening to this presentation. And I uh, also have to thank the organizers of the AAAFM uh, meeting for inviting me to present this uh, new data here. Uh, my name is Stefan Seger. I'm working at the University of Zurich in Switzerland at the Department of Chemistry. And uh, we are working for many years on coatings uh, for specific properties of, of materials like uh, super hydrophobicity, super oleophobicity, so in other words, super anti-wetting um, uh, properties. And uh, maybe you remember two years ago, I have uh, talked about, uh, let's say about, a, um, oh, excuse me, the, no, we have it, um, uh, about silicon nanofilament technology. Uh, where we have introduced a new way or in, a new uh, structure, as you can see on the electron microscope image on the left side, uh, a very uh, special topography made from silicone. Uh, and this generates uh, a super hydrophobic property on surfaces. So chemistry is very simple. It's basically polysiloxane chemistry. And uh, the principle of this uh, super hydrophobic um, pre, um, uh, coating is uh, this specific nano coat, nanotopography, excuse me, nanotopography uh, repelling water, as you can see on the image on the uh, upper right side. Uh, the principle just is a bit fundamental now, but, but it's just a, a brief introduction, uh, is based on using little nano droplets of water at surfaces as a reaction confinement. Uh, the water droplets absorb all ingredients. The polymerization uh, takes place in the water droplet and uh, the, yeah, the, the, the polymer is, is settling down. And on the top of the, of the filament, there's still the water droplet and uh, the reaction takes place. And so the, uh, the silicone material is formed only in one dimension. Uh, limited on the size of the of the water droplet. Okay, now the the problem with all coatings, of course, is that if you scratch the surface, uh, the properties are gone uh, because you have destroyed the coating. And this also happens on your car, even even uh, the the paint of of a car, which is uh, in a way very resistant resisting but but also it is um, not good enough as you can see maybe on your car after a while you have scratches on the surface and so our idea was now to go a step away from the coating and make a super hydrophobic bulk material uh, so in other words you scratch over the surface you generate in a way the new super hydrophobic surface and uh, then the super hydrophobicity should be uh, uh, still available and uh, uh, the scratching uh, is not such an issue anymore. Uh, I want to show in the few minutes I have uh, just how we have done it. We need a special topography and we need a hydrophobic material for this. And this is what we have done and you can, can see it here in, the, in, this, in this part of the picture. It's the most important one. We mix a, a, a silane a molecule and um, with, with uh, polypropylene, polypropylene uh, beads, little particles, which are in the nano size, and then uh, let them polymerize. And we have now such a kind of bulk material, of course. As, uh, as we're not talking about the coating, we are really talking about making a bulk polymer. Uh, this is a very simple process. And uh, it is indeed working. I will come to this later. And uh, then we have also thought about, OK, if we have the super hydrophobic nature, or we can generate the super hydrophobic nature. Then, of course, it would be nice to have a self-cleaning effect as well. This means if impurities are on the coating, uh, sorry, on the, on the bulk material, on the surface, uh, that it can be uh, easily removed, uh, for example, by a photocatalytic reaction. And so far, we mixed uh, diacyan diamide uh, into, this, into this, this composite here. Uh, and then we should, because this is known after the uh, reaction to carbon nitrides, that it uh, is known to, 
to be uh, you have to act as a catalyst for for this uh, uh, photo reaction. Okay, make a long story short, uh, we mix all together. Uh, yes, we get a bulk material, of course. Uh, this can be seen here. These uh, are some some parts uh, we made from this from this new polymer, and now, of course, it is a question to to characterize and analyze uh, uh, this new material. Now, what you see is uh, here on the on the first three pictures uh, the electron microscope images. Uh, you see that we have this rough topography, which is necessary for the superhydrophobic effect. Then in the EDX experiments, this is DEFG, you see the elements, of course, of the, of the components we use. Um, so it's clear that it should work. Uh, and then uh, on the bottom left, you see the, the water repellents. We have a very strong water repellents. Here, water is coming down onto the surface and it's bounced off by the, bounced off by the, by the uh, surface of this bike material. And here again, you see it in the microscope image, a water droplet bounces off completely from the surface. So this means there is no wetting at all. Good. Uh, another way to, to show more in a uh, quantitative way is a uh, superhydrophobicity. You see, uh, is a, is a contact angle here, contact angle of uh, of the surface, and you see we have a 170 degree uh, contact angle and also a sliding angle which is very low. It's below 10 degree. This is very nice. So in principle, it is superhydrophobic. And if we cut such a material here several times and then we measure again the contact angle uh, there's a kind of, of uh, this is shown here uh, and here you see that we still remain also the contact angle and the hydrophobicity the super hydrophobicity uh, remains yeah, so this is also shown again by the, the droplet experiments bouncing off from the surface this means scratching on the surface does not affect in any way the superhydrophobic property. Good. Uh, now, a very important thing in, for, for materials is, of course, the mechanical uh, properties. And here we, you can measure the compressive strain, tensile strain, and flexural strain. Uh, this is what we did, at least. And uh, we saw very good uh, properties here. It's, it's for many applications. It's, it's OK. It's fine. Uh, and this is a. I think the, 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 the risky part of, of such a project that we have finally a, a material which can be used and applied uh, to several things and does not break down after uh, a little bit of impact. Huh? Good. Okay, now uh, also we have checked uh, the chemical stability against HCl, against sodium hydroxide, uh, and against organic solvent. And you see uh, that we still keep this contact angle, this super hydrophobicity uh, after 60 minutes um, and uh, also after impact of uh, several organic solvents. So this is also, of course, an important property of such a material. Uh, finally, we have to show the uh, self-cleaning properties and the self-cleaning properties. Uh, can be also observed uh, by uh, looking at the contact angle because if you have impurities on the surface, then the uh, hydrophobicity, the super hydrophobicity breaks down. This is what you can see here in image B. Uh, this is uh, the native or the, the virgin material. This is after adding impurities. The contact angle goes down to 110 degrees in this case. But after uh, photocatalysis, uh, it can be recovered again completely to the original value and this for several times. So the self-cleaning obviously is working. It is an indirect method um, measuring the contact angle, of course, but what we can do, of course, is measure uh, the, the uh, infrared absorbance uh, in the in the spectral range here, this we have used oleic acid as a as a contamination uh, substance. You see here the peak of this, and after the uh, 
photocatalyst is after the self-cleaning as this peak disappears. So in other words, the molecules are away, uh, they're gone. And here again, you can see it's contaminated uh, water rinsing. And then after photocatalysis, you see that the impurity is gone. So this is basically all I have to say. In summary, we have made a new material nice properties, super hydrophobic, uh, self-cleaning, uh, fluorine-free uh, material, and uh, also with very good mechanical stability. So thank you for your attention. And uh, yeah, if there are some questions, we are, of course, open to answer. <laughs>